Hey, welcome to another episode of Meet Me Israel's 36 Towns and Villages of the Golan Heights. Today, we're heading over to Kibbutz Afik. It was established in 1972, and it's in the southern part of the Golan Heights. Let's go check it out. As we drove in, we noticed this big, beautiful sports field right at the entrance. We continued on our way and came across what used to be Kibbutz Afik's dairy farm. The dairy farm relocated to a nearby town, but here there are still some teenage cows who are just, well, being teenagers. Let's go say hello to these ladies. Here she comes. Hello. Coming to say hello? You telling your friends? Uh oh. Be nice, girls. Hello, ladies. You coming? Hi girls. Hey, so here we are in Kibbutz Afik. We're going to go talk with Marla Van Meter right now to hear all about the kibbutz. Hi, so I'm here with Marla, a resident of Kibbutz Afik. How did Afik get started? Well, Afik was uh, founded in 1972. That means this last year we had an amazing celebration of our 50 years already. It was really quite exciting. Uh, and it started as what they call a Garin Nachal. That's, uh, Nachal is part of a, a, a branch in the army where the soldiers do part-time service in new communities, like border communities usually. Uh, and part in the army. And so it was founded by, a, and they call it a garin, which in Hebrew is like a group of uh, seeds, mm. right? Um, uh, so they started the kibbutz. And so largely it was founded by Israelis, native Israelis. And uh, over time, when uh, at that time when my husband and I came, uh, it was already 1984, mm. uh, they had very few uh, immigrants coming. So we were like the first Americans. Wow, well, right. So that was time. really exciting. And it was funny because I said, uh, after traveling around other, other kibbutzim in the Golan, because the dream, the goal was to come and settle on the Golan. And uh, after coming to Afik, I said, we have to be here because here we'll learn Hebrew. But everybody wants to learn and practice their English. <laughs> so that was kind of exciting uh, to be one of the first. And, uh, and it was nice, too, as immigrants to have this amazing bear hug of, of kibbutz life. And, um, and the kibbutz was, uh, the children always stayed at home. There was never a, a living in the children's house. But the framework of the kibbutz, three meals in the dining room, having your laundry done, you know, the children being in uh, educational frameworks from say three months till high school, wow. till four o'clock, um, uh, many other, you know, all the, the, the branches, everybody, almost everybody who lived on the kibbutz worked on the kibbutz. And then as things progressed, uh, in the 1990s, the kibbutz started going towards privatization mm -hmm. and you started paying for your electricity, paying for your water, paying to eat in the dining room. And uh, 
um, uh, slowly, slowly, people also started branching out, working in other places besides the, the kibbutz itself. And the kibbutz uh, also kept branches that were only economically uh, feasible, not ideological feasible. Okay. So um, you saw a lot of changes in that direction. And, and then came the idea of um, how is the kibbutz going to continue to grow? Uh, and so we opened the, like many kibbutzim did, to what they called the archava, the expansion of the kibbutz and inviting people to come, uh, you know, build homes uh, and not necessarily, at first, not necessarily be members. Now everyone that comes to the kibbutz has to go through a membership uh, process. Like you need to get accepted here? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, the kibbutz, even though it's privatized, we still have uh, our culture together. We celebrate all the holidays together. It's a secular kibbutz. So the holidays are, are celebrated more in the Zionist realm of like okay. the like Shavuot, for example, is a harvest mm. festival. Right. And so you parade around the baby calves and the little chickens and you bring all the, the offerings of the, of the fields and the, and the uh, orchards, things like that. Wow. Mm. So it's been really exciting where, you know, like I said, in the 1990s, why did we go to privatization? Like a lot of uh, kibbutzim, uh, for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there's this new burst, this new energy, a wonderful young families coming to live on the Golan. And it's very exciting. And because it's not just an agricultural community, because you have to admit, not everybody's built to be farmers. Right. But you can live here and work off the community in, in you know, high tech, in um, social services, in, you know, whatever there is, you right. know, um, uh, stores, shops, variety of things. I think one of the challenges of living in a rural uh, area like the Golan, the Negev, the Galil, you have to uh, know that you're going to be driving places. Right. Okay? You're not, uh, not everything is like right at your fingertips. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, 24 hour <laughs> shops here. Uh, no uh, many marked yeah, on the corner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's uh, the periphery living, huh? Yeah, yeah, peripheral yeah. living has that, but, but uh, uh, it's also very neighborly because of that. Right. You know, now we have WhatsApp, you say, oh, I need some diapers for the baby, boom! You know, you've got 15 Amazing. people ready to, right. to give you a diaper until the store opens up, you know, <laughs> on, uh, the next day. Culture, we have on the Golan. It's not that we don't have culture, and uh, the theater companies come to the Golan, right. and the singers come to the Golan, and the dance troops. But it's farther and few between, but I always laugh to myself. Because people that I know live in Tel Aviv, how much can you afford to go to a once a month? Right. I can do that too here. Right. You know? So uh -huh. I don't feel um, I don't feel like my life lacks anything. I feel like it's enriched. But I also uh, love the like I said the the the, the, the warmth, the hospitality here, the, the quiet, the patience, the nature. You 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 just can't beat it. Golan is just known as the. Uh, as the playground in the north for, for um, river rafting, jeep riding, horseback riding, hiking, it's just beautiful. So one of the nice attractions here on the kibbutz is that the site of the kibbutz used to be the largest Syrian army base in the south. And one of the buildings that is still standing was the commander's house. And the spy uh, that everybody's familiar with, Eli Cohen, uh, was actually here and stood on the balcony of this of this commander's house. It overlooks the Kinneret and down in the valley and it looks over at another archeological site, a city called Susita, that's had a lot of um, uh, digging going on. It will be opened up uh, this year, I think as a national park. And there's a beautiful garden. A gentleman donated money in memory of his family that was perished in the Holocaust. And the, this, the, the beginning of a trail down to the Afik Spring is there, and it's really very, very special. For the last 38 years, I've been working in, all, in, in charge of all the public gardens on the kibbutz, which has been great, because my, my dream was working the land. And um, when I came here, I saw that there was uh, a lot of weeds all around, so I said, I'll take the gardens, but it's it's a, it's a wonderful job because 
uh, as all the development has happened, the new dining room, the pool, the new neighborhoods, you know, I, I, the, the guest house, I come along and do the gardening and then you really feel like you've painted the Golan green. It's more than just a home, it's a, it's a way of life. Marla and I went for a walk through the kibbutz. We went to see the pool, the guest house, the park, and so many other beautiful areas that kibbutz Afik has to offer. Marla explained that her son and his other friends worked on this big, beautiful mosaic together. And this was part of our 50th uh, year anniversary of using the whole walls of the pool to, um, uh, for everybody to have their family names. past Kibbutz Afik's coffee shop and continued to the guest houses where people can come stay for vacation for a few days, have a family weekend, or even come for all sorts of celebrations. This is the guest house office and it also has a spa. were the first, these what they called chetim, because they're in the shape of a chet, the mm -hmm. letter chet, um, were the first little apartments of the, of the uh, kibbutz. And uh, so these are what they call their premium rooms, and they're just very nicely done now. All the family names, I have to add uh, the, the family <laughs> has the, fa the family names, so we keep adding names. Right. Every, every support. And this has a, uh, a story of a feat, of how it started. We continued walking through the beautiful grounds on the kibbutz. There's a little grocery store and a great park with all kinds of climbing equipment. There is also even a cool dinosaur that was custom made for the kibbutz and has a sound system so you can crawl inside the dinosaur and listen to an automated story. Here's the bus stop where the kids park their bikes and then they take a local bus, like a school bus, that will take the kids to the local schools in the area. It's a nice sign, it says Bahat Slacha Lechol Yeladei Afik. It's wishing good luck to all the kids in Afik because school recently started.
way out, I stop by to see the Kibbutz's factory. This factory is called Afik Printing Solutions, and I learned that it's the leading company in Israel who produce cartridges for inkjet and laser printers. It was really wonderful to meet Marla. She taught me so much about Kibbutz Afik. I can't wait to come back soon. Thanks for joining me today in Kibbutz Afik. I'll see you next time.